this video is just looking at the difference between a TTX created by Trados 2007 or earlier and a TTX created by the STLX lift to legacy converter. The reason I'm looking at this is to help people understand the process that they go through when they're asked to provide a TTX by their customer. So I'm going to start off by showing you an article here uh, on my blog. It's called Unclean. Who thought of that? And if you scroll down here, We'll see we're talking about a little application called STL Legit. I'm going to use this application because if you're a Studio 2014 user and fairly new to the industry perhaps, it's unlikely you will have a copy of STL Charters 2007. And this application uses Charters 2007 assemblies to create either a TTX, um, it's a Charters tag file, or a bilingual doc file, both of which were legacy bilingual formats. The process that we're going to go through, because this is quite handy, this little picture, is we're going to imagine that we've received a clean monolingual file from our customer. In this case I'm going to use a docx for that. I'm going to convert it to a fully segmented unclean file, translate it in studio, save the target file as a translated unclean file, which will be the TTX, and then clean it in Workbench so that you can see the process. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the docx in Studio. I'm going to convert that to a um, TTX using the SCLX to Legacy Converter and then clean that up in Workbench. So that will enable me to show you the difference between the two and explain why one is more appropriate than the other depending on what it is you are doing for your customer. So let's close that. Um, let's go to Studio. I'll just close that because we don't need that open. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got here a docx, which if I open this up, you can see it's just got a few segments in it. It's not very big, it's a few sentences and a picture of a computer. What I've also got set up already is an empty folder where I'm going to put a couple of files as we save them. And I've got a Trados 2007 translation memory, which I'm going to use when I'm um, cleaning up the files. So let's start off then by first of all converting this docx to a ttx file because this is what I'd have to do if my client asked me for a ttx file back well this is the sensible thing to do so first of all I go to studio and because I've already installed SDL Legit I'm going to um, click on that application and this is what I'm going to use to convert to ttx so I'm going to check that box because I'm converting to ttx and then pick up my docx file drop it into the interface of the application, change my languages to the ones I'm going to use, and I'm using English United Kingdom to Spanish, not because I can speak Spanish, it was just a convenient language I was thinking of at the time, and then I'm going to click on convert, and this will convert that docx file into a ttx file for me fully segmented TTX file. There are explanations about segmenting and what that means in that article, so please feel free to go and read that. So I've got my file. If I close that now, you can now see I have a TTX file here. And if I double click the TTX, just so you can see what that looks like, this will open up in Tag Editor. If you had Trados 2007 installed, you may not. Don't worry about that. I'm just doing it so that you can see what the client is going to be looking at. use different languages. Okay, so what I've got here is my source segment and on the right of it my target segment. In this case it's just a copy of the source because I had an empty translation memory and the STL Legged application by default if there's nothing found in the translation memory will copy source to target to make sure that it's fully segmented. So I have a segment for each sentence in my Word document, but it's now part of this TTX file. So this is a bilingual TTX file. You can see the tags, you can expand the tags just the same as you can in Studio. Um, so you see <coughs> there's a little bit of familiarity there because they're, they're all Trados products. So let's close that window. What I'm going to do now is open the doc file in 
Visit Studio Direct. Oh, no, no, before I do that, sorry, I was going to go through a round trip. So I'm going to open the TTX. So I'll open this in Studio. So let's open it straight away. It recognized the languages because it was a fully segmented TTX. And I should see Source and Target available in Studio for me to go through and correct. I'm going to, going to assume that this is now all fully translated and correct. I'm just going to assume that's the case. And I'm going to save my target file. So I'm going to save file, save target as. And I get given an option at this point. My option is to save it either as a Trados tag document or an original file format. Now, if I didn't know what a Trados tag document is, it's a bit of a clue because the file name is here, .ttx. It's telling me it's a TTX file. But what I can also do is I can just cancel that for a second. So just remember this Trados tag document. If I go to help, I can click on the knowledge base. This brings up the knowledge base for me. And in here, I can just do a quick search. Trados tag. This will bring me up some results. I can have a look through these. I can read a rough description here. And actually, I can see straight away, you are opening a TTX document, Trados tag. So I have a pretty good idea. I don't really need to look any further because I can see exactly what um, a Trados tag is. There's probably more information in something like here. STL Trados Studio 2014 SP1 Migration Guide. Um, this is going to be really a guide about migrating from the older products or something like that to the new ones. And this will discuss um, Trados tag TTX files again. So <laughs> without too much effort, I know what a Trados tag file is. So I'll cancel that. And I don't really need to know any more than that. I know it's a bilingual file. I know I knew what a TTX was. Now I know what a Trados tag is. So let's go back to file. Save target as. I'm going to pick the Trados tag document because that's what I've been asked to give back to my client. So I click OK. And maybe I'll put a T for target at the beginning or something like that. Just so I can see that I've got a separate, or there's a difference between, a, 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 a difference there. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to press Control S here just to save this file. Could have used File, Save, same thing. The reason I'm saving that is because this will create the SGLX lift file that I'm actually working on here, the Studio Bilingual file, and I want to keep a copy of that just to show you something in a minute. So I'll close that. Maybe go to my projects and just remove that project from the list because I'm not too interested in the project file itself. So you can see that project file there. I'm not really too bothered about that. I don't want it really. So what I'll do is go back to Studio and just remove that from my list. So I'll right click on there and say remove from list. Yes, close the project. That's going to close the project in Studio and remove it from my list. Let's wait and see. There we go. And I'm now I'm just going to delete it from there. So all I've got in here now is the original docx, the TTX I created using STL Liggett. I then opened that in Studio, which gave me this STLX lift, and then I saved the target file as that TTX. Now I'm going to open this folder here, Working Files, and I'm just going to copy this TTX into here. So this is a copy of the TTX I've just saved from Studio. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to Trados Workbench, which is a part of Trados 2007, and if you have a client who's asked you for TTX files, chances are they probably have a copy of this. Quite probably. And what they will do with this TTX is they will clean it up. So to do that, they'll make sure they have a translation memory open. They'll then click on Tools, Clean Up. They'll drag the TTX file, the TTX file into that window, and then press Clean Up. And this can do two things. One is it updates their translation memory with the contents of the bilingual file. So I could click on this and it would update the translation memory. And at the same time, it removes the tags from the TTX and reconstructs the docx file, which is what I want to do, update document. So if I look in here at the moment, I've only got the TTX. I come here, I press cleanup. That's finished. So now I can cancel that. And when I come back to here, 
now you can see I've now got a docx file same extension as the ttx I double click the docx file and I've got my word document back again so basically it's doing just the same as you would normally do in studio but it's enabling the client who's using this old legacy technology to do the same thing so what I did there was just to go over that I converted the docx to ttx using STL legit I opened that TTX in Studio, which gave me this SDLX lift, and then I translated it, or I pretended to translate it, and then I saved the target file as a TTX, which is that one, copied it over there, and cleaned it up, which gave me the docx back again, same as the one I started with. So that all worked fine. What I'm going to do now is show you what happens. So let me just delete that. If, for example, I was to open this docx, so let me just delete these two. I'm going to take a copy of this over here, my computer. Actually, I don't need this docx either, sorry, that's not what I wanted to show you. I've shown you the workflow with the TTX, so let me delete this too. What I'm going to do this time is show you how you would do this using the legacy converter. So say for example, I open the docx in studio. So in United Kingdom to Spanish Spain. Okay. That's my docx open in studio. What I'll do now is I'm going to copy source to target because it's easier in here than it is in um, tag editor to save that file and I'm going to close it. So what I've actually got here is I have an SDLX lift file and I have the project file. What I'm going to do now is go back to studio, go to the welcome view and I'm going to use the SDLX lift legacy converter. And with this tool I'm going to take the SDLX lift drag it into here and I'm going to convert it to a TTX so that's my TTX and if I look in here now just delete the log file because I don't need it there's my TTX file and if I double click this TTX file I open this up in tag editor you can see I also get a fully segmented file but this time you can see there's no formatting in there the tags will be different um, because all I've done is I've converted the SDLX lift file to TTX I've not converted a docx to a TTX I've converted the SDLX lift file to a TTX so if I copy that over to this side so I've got this here and I have a go at cleaning this up in Workbench so if I was to return this TTX to my client instead of the one we did before I click on Tools, Clean Up pick up the TTX drop it in the box make sure I'm checked and click Clean Up what we're looking out for this time is that what you're seeing in here this time is I've now created an SDLX lift so the cleanup operation did not create a docx, it created an SDLX lift. And that's because the original file that I converted to TTX was an SDLX lift. It was not a docx. But more importantly, look at the size of this SDLX lift. And now compare that with the size of this one. It's a fraction of the size. And that's because if I open this file with the text editor, you can see that it is actually an XML file it's XLIF I've got the embedded docx in there and if I scroll down I've got the bilingual content tagging information everything that goes along with that particular file it's all there if I open up this one it's not even an XLIF <laughs> it's just a bit of cleanup text off RTF based that Tag Editor uses because Tag Editor has no idea what an XLIF is the only thing it was able to do was put the, SD, the SDLX lib extension onto the end of the file 
So if you were to send this file, this TTX file, to your client, um, yes, they could clean it up into translation memory, and they might be happy with that. They might not. But what they will not be able to do is to clean it up and leave themselves with a docx file. Now I hope that I hope that explains the difference. So by using SDL Legit and translating the TTX file in Studio, the TTX I save back out of Studio when I do that can be cleaned up properly in Translator's Workbench and you can recover the monolingual file. If I convert the SDLX lift to a TTX using the SDLX lift to legacy converter, all I'm going to get back is a is an S another SDLX lib at the end of the day and it's not even an SDLX lib. It just has an SDLX lib extension. Completely useless. The reason you have a file like this or what makes this particular tool valuable is if, if your workflow was to open a Word document in Studio, translate it or start translating it or maybe have a project with lots of Word files and you decided you wanted to share some of your work with a colleague and your colleague did not have a copy of Studio and they did not have a tool that was capable of handling an STLX lift, then you could use the STLX lift to legacy converter to convert it to a TTX. And then they can open that TTX in any tool they like. If they're still using Trodus, they can just double click it and um, when, they, when they open that file up, it looks nice and neat. Very easy, very, very easy for them to be able to, to open and translate. So they can just open their, um, their first segment, they can do their translation, and they can work their way through the um, through the document, segment by segment, doing the translation. Piece of cake. But they wouldn't be able to do that with the SDLX lift unless they had Studio or some other tool that supported it. This is the use case for this particular um, application. I hope that's clear. I've had to do that recording a few times because I wasn't quite sure which was the best way to explain it, but I hope I made.